OK, so in this demonstration, we're going to look at two simple elastic properties, the stiffness or the Young's modulus of a material and its thermal expansion coefficient. Now, both of these properties depend on the forces between atoms, as shown by this graph here. The Young's modulus of the material depends on the gradient of the graph. The higher the gradient, the higher the value of the Young's modulus. Whereas the thermal expansion coefficient depends on how symmetric the graph is. The higher the asymmetry, the greater the value of the thermal expansion coefficient. Now, typically, the deeper this potential well, the higher the gradient, and the lower the thermal expansion coefficient. Uh, and this is illustrated by this graph up here, where we can see that ceramics, which have very strong bonds, they tend to have a very deep potential well, which gives them a high gradient, and therefore a high value of the modulus, and they're quite symmetrical, which gives them a low value of the thermal expansion coefficient. Polymers, on the other hand, they have a much shallower potential well, which gives them a lower gradient uh, and a higher uh, asymmetry. Um, at the bottom here, we have some data for some real materials. Uh, for the thermal expansivity, curve, uh, thermal expansivity and the Young's modulus. And it's worth noting that both of these graphs are plotted on log scales. Um, a couple of polymers are shown in green, and we can see here that they have a high value of the thermal expansivity and a low modulus, whereas ceramics, which are shown in red, will have a low thermal expansivity and a high modulus. Uh, and in both cases, metals tend to be somewhere in between. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pour liquid nitrogen into this box, which should gen generate a temperature change of about 200 degrees. And then we're going to wait for the strips to cool down. So you can see that they're bending already. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the box around so that you can see the curvature more clearly. And you should be able to see that the sample that's bending the most is the one with the black tape, which was the aluminium bonded to the polycarbonate. And the one that's bending the least is the one with the red tape, which was the aluminium bonded to the steel. So we saw that the strip that curved the most was the aluminium bonded to the polycarbonate. Now, that might seem slightly counterintuitive, because if you look at these values of the thermal expansion coefficients, steel actually has the lowest value, and polycarbonate has the highest. So you might think that the bimaterial strip that should have deformed the most was the steel bonded to the polycarbonate. Now, that would be true if the thermal expansion coefficient was the only important factor. But the other important factor is the stiffness, or the uh, modulus of the two different materials. And we can see that steel has a much, much greater value of the modulus than polycarbonate. And when you have two different materials bonded together that have very different values of the modulus, the stiffer material dominates, and there's actually going to be less curvature. And that's shown by this expression here, um, which is uh, for the curvature, or kappa, of the material. And you can see that on the top of the equation, we've got this term delta epsilon. And that's the term that actually depends on the thermal expansion coefficient. It's called the misfit strain. And basically, the bigger the value of, or the bigger the difference in thermal expansion coefficient, the greater the value of the curvature, which is what you expect. But on the bottom of this equation, we have two terms that depend on the relative moduli of the materials. And so if one material has a much greater modulus than the other, the term on the bottom is large, which means that the curvature is smaller. So to generate the maximum degree of curvature, what you need is you need two materials that have a very different value of the thermal expansion coefficient, but with moduli that are very similar. And that explains why the aluminium polycarbonate strip deformed the most. You can see they've got a large difference in thermal expansion coefficient. And although aluminium has a much higher modulus than polycarbonate, it's a lot lower than uh, the modulus of steel, which means that a greater curvature can be generated. The experimental results can be verified using this simple simulation, which is based on the equation that we've just seen. So we've got the same three bimaterial strips as we had in the experiment. We've got steel polycarbonate, steel aluminium, and aluminium polycarbonate. Uh, it is worth pointing out that in the simulation, each strip has a thickness of one millimeter, which is the same as we had in the experiment. So to start off with, the strips are all at room temperature, and we can simulate cooling them down by pressing start, and then by dragging this slider down to a lower temperature. So we're going to change the temperature down to minus 196 degrees C, or 77 Kelvin, which is the temperature of liquid nitrogen. So you can see that as we cool them down, the strip's bent, and the strip with the greatest curvature is the aluminium polycarbonate strip, which is the same as in the experiment. So the curvatures are given down here, and for the aluminium polycarbonate strip, uh, the curvature is 3.65, which corresponds to a radius of curvature, which is this distance here, of about 300 millimetres.